when you when you think about energy, I know you mentioned ATP at one point, um, and a lot of people are struggling with fatigue or, or low energy. I don't know if this is part of your study or something that you think much about. Just a curiosity that came to mind is how do you how do you perceive energy as as a as a thing that that someone can have or not or, or something that's kind of like flowing through the through the world. Um, do you mean like consciousness or like just energy to have throughout the day? I guess I guess either one. I guess I, I <laughs> both to be somewhat linked in a way, but um, maybe maybe a, one intrigues you more than the other. I, I know that um, in some disciplines they may be seen as sort of one one in the same in a way, but maybe you see them as like different things. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you make of it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure either. I mean, when I think of energy, I definitely, it comes down to ATP, I think for me, like I have struggled with chronic fatigue and it just seems like an emptiness almost. Like you just feel so devoid of any like energy or life force, you know? So it's like when you get so tired at the end of the day, like I would, I would get super tired as soon as the sun set. I would just feel like done for the day, like my brain shuts off, I'm done. And it would take like sleeping to get that energy again. So I definitely think it comes down to like ATP for sure, but like also the flux of just your pathways in general and your metabolism and your ability to funnel um, information and molecules where they need to go, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I've been fascinated by this as well for, for a long time, just because it almost seems like my quality of life is very much linked with my quality of energy. Like the more energy I have, the, the better I can create a higher quality of life. So it's, it's almost like this fundamental way that, that I'm able to create a cooler world for myself and for those around me. And what, what I've been fascinated by really over the past sort of recent season in my life, the past five, 10 years, whatever it is, is how much energy comes from things that aren't food and sleep, where I'm able to engage in a movement practice that doesn't it make me exhausted, like it gives me energy. I'm able to go outside with my shoes off, bare feet on the soil, and it gives me energy. I'm accessing you know, earth energy. If, if I get sunshine, that sun energy, it's like it's energizing. And these aren't you know food or, or sleep sources. There are these ways that I'm able to get energy that are outside of, of food and sleep, or even having a conversation like this. Like it's giving me energy to connect with a like-minded person, someone that I'm able to vibe with and talk about these things that I'm curious on. And and there are all these different ways to get energy that are outside of this, you know, uh, simple system of of food and and sleep. And that just it boggles my mind because then once you start playing with sort of integrating these together where you've got earthing and movement and sunshine and you're with people that you enjoy being around and you've just got this whole new flavor of energy that just brings an electricity to life that I have been excited about for, for a while now. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, when I was first starting to realize that I needed to do something about my chronic fatigue, the first thing I did was I started weightlifting because I hadn't ever exercise consistently. And then I took a hormone test around that time. And I found out that I have high testosterone for a woman. So I was like, okay, I'm going to build muscle with this then. So I started uh, pursuing like bodybuilding and weightlifting. And I realized that I had so much more energy after I worked out. And I've started to realize that, you know, if I don't work out, then I don't have that same quality of energy, you know, and it's, I think it's an important thing for everyone to integrate because, you know, building muscle and working out does build mitochondria. So you do end up with more energy afterward, the more you pursue it. And it can be um, really helpful just to balance out the rest of your pathways and make sure you're um, never going too far to the right or too far to the left. And I think sunlight is also super important for, you know, getting those anabolic reactions up and going because we always think about, ATP as that molecule that gives us energy, but there's also um, like a bunch of signaling molecules that also send this message to the rest of our cell that we have energy and we're in an abundance of energy and we can spend money, money, I say it's ATP on uh, building things like glycogen and things like that. So those molecules are like citrate or NADH 
Um, and you don't hear those talked about as much, but they're also molecules that tell the cell like, hey, we have a lot of energy, so feel free to go build stuff. You know, we could build like nucleotides and stuff with that. So it's it all is connected, I think. And, you know, sunlight gives us that message and working out gives us that message and eating good quality food does the same thing. What a cool way to describe that. Very well said. I, I enjoyed that. That was a really nice riff. I, I have this whole image of my mind of how the body's working on like a microscopic level of how all the <laughs> systems are sort of working together.